Numbers chapter 20 in the first verse. Numbers chapter 20 in the first verse. The Bible says, Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode there and was buried abode in K excuse me for the first month and the people abode in Kadesh and Miriam died there and was buried there and there was no water for the congregation and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and the people chode with Moses and spake saying would God that we had died when the brethren died, when our brethren died before the Lord and why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that in this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have you made us to come up out of Egypt and to bring us unto this evil place? It is not it is no place of seed or figs or vines or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the, con the tabernacle of the congregation. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of God appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto them, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts uh, drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the, to gather the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water from, out of this rock? Moses lifted up his hand with the rod, and he smote the rock twice. Amen. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beast also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because you believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I had given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus saith the brother, thus saith thy brother Israel, thou knowest all travail that hath befallen us. How our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have dealt, dwelt in Egypt a long time. And the Egyptians vexed us and our, and our fathers. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your precious word. Lord, we praise you for the Holy Ghost. Lord, we pray that you would send the Holy Spirit this way today. Mingle with our hearts. Lord, give, grant us the power to preach. Lord, grant the listeners the ability to listen. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we'll get down there in a moment, but our real text verse is found in the middle where it says we dwelt in Egypt a long time. Now, if you're like me, and I know each and every one of you are, we're made out of the same stuff, sometimes it seems a long time from good service to good service. It seems a long time in private prayer before we hear from God. From one prayer where God really meets with us to the next sometimes is a long time. Now, the question to you is what do you do in the long time? Now, I'm going to tell you how it, well, this instance happened before. And I'm going to tell you how long it was, it was between to the two instances. In other words, how long has it been? How long has it been since you met with the Lord, since you felt, felt His presence completely on you? How long has it been? We need to answer that this morning. You want revival at New Testament Baptist Church? That's a question you're going to have to answer for yourself. Not as a group, but answer for yourself. Yeah. And the reason why 
Churches are made of people. And if the people individually don't meet with God, how could you expect them to meet with a group of them? And a lot of people ask today, what's wrong with our churches? Well, I can tell you it's been a long, long, long dry season. And New Testament is better than most. So we begin in the first verse. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. Now, I want you to notice two things about this verse. When they came across uh, the Jordan River the first time, and they came in, and they came into God's promised land, this same blood of land in that, in Genesis, uh, excuse me, in Exodus, is referred to as the wilderness of sin, not Zen. It's referred as the wilderness of sin. Now, each and every one of us that have been saved, surely you know this, that we're traveling in a wilderness of sin. You know, we, we fuss sometimes and we look about and we're amazed at sometimes at the trash that is going on around us. Well, dear friend, that's the wilderness of sin. God's people has always dwelt there. And you know why? That's why we're called pilgrims and strangers. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Amen. It's because it's a wilderness of sin. It's Amen. not our place. Now one day when it's burnt off and God begins it again, it will be our home, but not for now. And, and, and so I want you to see, if you remember what happened the first time they, they entered the wilderness of sin, they did the exact same thing. They, they began to challenge Moses, and they began to challenge God. Verse 2, And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. Now, you go a fairly long time without food, but you can't go long without water. Now, Everybody in this building knows, even the Andersons that only been with us about eight or nine months, knows my favorite drink is Diet Dr. Pepper. But you know, you know what the essential part of Diet Dr. Pepper is? It's water. You, you, you can't go without water. Now, unfortunately, or maybe, maybe fortunately, it's everybody's congregation. I mean, everybody's decision. I have watched people thirst to death. The people literally elected not to have a feeding tube. They were done with IVs. And you know how long they lasted? The longest one I saw was nine days. And they died too. And, and some that were already health compromised lived four. After we stopped Dad's feeding, I think he lived three days. Uh, and that is the reality of living without liquid. Now, as we see the rebellion of God's people rise up, remember this, we would likely do the same thing, and not just because of fear, because we're made out of the same stuff they were. Uh, we're we're uh, the identical flesh. And so as they're in this place, they begin to, to fuss and strive with God's people. And the people chose with Moses. Oh, and I'll, I'll point out one thing. There was a, re a reason Miriam died. Miriam was a rebel. Now, was Miriam saved? I don't know. But I do know that the only good thing, you know the only good thing I ever seen Miriam do was get Moses to say, I know a woman that could nurse him to the uh, Egyptian queen and talking about Moses when they had hit him in the, the little ark of bulrushes. That's the only good thing I've ever seen her do. Remember that time she came out against Moses and uh, the Lord God Almighty gave her leprosy? She was not a nice lady. And they were about to cross over. And remember, it says, this generation that rebelled against me all must die. Well, Miriam died too. That might give you a clue 
of the kind of character that Miriam had. And, and, and so we see that uh, uh, that she fulfills, if you will, the penalty of sin and she dies. Uh, verse 3, And the people chode or argued or rebelled again with Moses and spake, saying, Would, would God we have died with, when our brethren died before the Lord? Now I want you to notice two things. This is the second time that they say these almost exact words. The other one was, would to God we would have died by the flesh pots in Egypt. That's the first time these events transpired. And here we say the almost exact dialect. But in this one, it, it makes a reference to the Almighty. It, it makes a reference to the Lord God of heaven. Would to God we would have died before our, when our brethren died before the Lord. Now, if you remember the history of Israel, when they escaped, were they before the Lord? And the answer is an emphatic no. They were serving Egypt. They had gotten used to Egypt. You know, when they went down there, the Bible says there were 70 souls, and they went down there to escape the famine, and they lived for four hundred years. You know what God's plan was, was to leave after the drought was done. How long was that? Seven years, right? See, they weren't following God's plan, and by the time that Moses arrives on the scene, they're, they're overrun with idolatry, they're overrun with the gods of Egypt, and they do everything the Egyptians want them to do, and so they escape, and now they're trying to say the Lord was in that situation? You know, it amazes me today when, when people to try to say that God, the God, holy God of heaven, is in the filth that they call worship today. Sounds like an 80s rock concert, and they believe they're worshiping God? God help us. And so they were having... <laughs> Uh, they, were, they, were, they were having a glitch in memory, wasn't they? They weren't serving God down there. And, and, and so they, they almost used this as an excuse to rebel against Moses and Aaron. Verse 4, And why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have you made us come up out of, the, out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? Now, I want you to see in this verse, he makes a reference to an evil place. Now, let me ask you this. I've never gone hungry. I haven't always had what I wanted. And I didn't have all that I wanted as a child. I'll just be honest, but we always had something. You see what I'm saying? And... and when we only had some things, the flesh being the flesh, I wanted more. Right? That, that's just the natural part of the flesh. Now, I want you to see here, they're, they're, in, they're in much the exact same situation. They're fussing about what they do have. Why have you brought up the congregation into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die, and they complain about the place they're in. You ever complained about the place you're in? Now, a lot of times in the modern English culture, when we think about the place we're in, we think about right now we're at 805 Nat Cord Drive in the building where New Testament Baptist Church means. What place are you really in? Are you in a good place spiritually? Are you in a good place with your family, with your spouse? See, that's the place that they were talking about. You, you, you put us in a bad space, place, economically, spiritually, uh, uh, food-wise, we're in a bad, bad place. Now, when you're having a rough time, let me remind you of this. If you're saved, you're in a good place. Now, you may, you may be a little bit hungry. You may, you may not have everything that you want. 
but I will guarantee you this, you're in a good place. And they had forgotten that. It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. Now, every one of the things that they begin to list off are things that nurture the flesh and not nurture the spirit. The, the spirit. Why, why do you think, and it, and it certainly does even in the New Testament, why, why do you think the Bible calls us to fast? Because, number one, it feeds the spirit. And number two, it shows you where your priorities are. It, it, it's a lesson in priority. And, 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 and so we find here, we find a, what really is a, a spiritual image of where Israel is at. And, and they, you know, a lot of people don't realize this. A strict fast includes beverages. It includes, uh, it includes even water, if you will, or whatever you like to drink. It includes it all. And, and so they bring this up before them. Verse 5. Uh, excuse me, verse 6. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto, and, and if you underline in your Bible, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and fell upon their faces and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Now, I want you to notice two things here as well. First of all, they had to separate themselves. You know, they're, even down to family, there's going to be some times where you just have to separate, separate yourself. You, you want to meet with God? You're not going to meet with God with sinful people. Right? Poor old Jarrett found out the hard way, right? You just got to separate yourself. And so they couldn't hear from God with, with four and a half million people breathing down their necks about wanting something to eat and something to drink. And so they go to the, the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and they seek God. And you know what? He meets with them. You know, isn't it amazing when you follow the plan of God that He meets with you? He doesn't avoid you anymore. He does, you know, this is the thing about the different persons of the Godhead. We have to learn as a people who serves Him, God can't meet with sin. God Jehovah. Right? But Jesus is the is the remedy of sin. He is the sacrifice of sin. But you know what part of the Godhead can meet with sin? The Holy Ghost. He's the one that'll give you a good whipping when you need it. He's like the mom. And he'll work you over, and that's his job. And he's really, really good at it. Right? And, and, and so when we, when we look at his word and we consider this... Uh, we need to go to God when these problems are, and as we'll find, huh, there, can be, there can be great blessings in it. Verse 7, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather the assembly together, thou and Aaron, thy brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes. Now, if you underline in your Bible, underline where it says, Speak unto the rock. Because, see, the first time that this circumstance went down, what did he say to do to the rock? He said to strike it, right? Typifying the death of Christ and the life-giving water coming out of something that was dead. Something, something that had never had any life in it. You want to know long, what lost is, dear friend, that those of you that are lost? Lost is like that rock. There's not only is there no life in you, there's never been any life in you, spiritually speaking. And the only thing that's going to help is to be struck by the Holy Ghost. But now this time was different. Remember this, there was second run through the wilderness of sin. And he told Moses and told Aaron, 
You only speak to it this time. See, Jesus never has to die. Either. Right. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Isn't that a glorious thing? Uh, the New Testament is very clear. In fact, when we think we can, what does the Bible say? You put him to an open shame. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Think about the Catholics this morning as they're meeting. And, and they literally think the, the bread becomes the body of Christ and the, and the wine becomes the blood of Christ. What are they doing to our Lord and Savior? They're bringing him to an open shame. Right? right? He never has to die again. At once and for all, the Bible said he sat down at the right hand of God and the work of redemption was done. And that was a type of this, but Moses' anger got the best of it. Listen, church, if you don't get nothing else this morning out of this sermon, you get this one. Don't let what lost people push your buttons because they will. Mm -hmm. They like to see you blow up. And let me tell you, dear friend, when they're done, all they're doing is laughing at you. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. So the congregation, they were pushing his buttons. Listen, you talk about deja vu. He was living it. <laughs> you know, oh, I've been through this before. <laughs> do, do, you, do, you, do you remember how the Lord put it the first time that this event went down? He says, you, you strike it as an ensample. And then on the very same occasion, you know, that, a lot of people don't, if you, you just have to read the Bible carefully, that's when man began to fall too. The very same day, the first thing that this went to happen. Now, you know what uh, man is? We, we call it a wafer or something like that. But did you ever have an aunt or somebody who wasn't the best at making biscuits, but you had to eat them anyway? My mother-in-law went to school with my Aunt Nancy. She, she was a nice lady, but saying that she was a cook would be a stretch. And when I was a boy, if I spent the night with Melissa, you know what I had to do the next day? I had to eat that breakfast. And the whole time I was eating, I was thinking, this sure ain't like mama's. But you know what? I ate it anyway. And you know what? When we were all done and me and Melissa were back out with the pony, my belly was full. Was it what I wanted? No. Was it what, did it fulfill the purpose? You betcha. And that is what this word does for us. It's not always pleasant, isn't it? Is it? You like to hear me harp on the same thing over and over and over again? Well, that's your man. What, what else am I to teach? <laughs> right? And, and, and so we see then that they're back in this spot. They repeat the same exact thing. And even Moses gets mad this time, and he hits the rock again. Again, a type of putting Christ to an open shame. Now, verse 11, or verse 12, excuse me. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because you believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, Therefore, ye, have, ye shall not bring the congregation into the land which I have given them. In other words, you're not going to cross over either. Right? Uh, you know what we need to do? Is just follow God's plan. Now, you think about up the road about four blocks up at First B this morning. Are they, pre are they preaching... Look unto Christ. There's no, It's the preacher saying, there's nothing I can do. Look unto Christ. Or is he saying, come little children and repeat this prayer. Or this one, this one sends me off the roof every time. Every, every head bowed, every eyes closed. If you want to be saved, raise your hand. Well, where do they get that? Right? That, that's not in the Bible. Right? 
It, it's a falsity. But you know what? It'd be a lot easier to preach, wouldn't it? And at least at man's eyes, you'd have a lot better results than your pastor saying, there's nothing I can do. But who's being honest with you? Who's giving you the good water? Who, who is shooting straight with you? And, and, and that's what's necessary. So if you know the rest of this story, at least with Aaron and Moses, Aaron died not long after this event. And Moses got to look over and see it, but he never got to go in. Remember he went up on Mount Moriah? And, and, he, and, and the Bible says this, uh, God buried Moses. You want, you want sanction for burial instead of this cremation stuff that's taken over? There you go. <laughs> right? If God did it, I'm going to try to replicate it, right? Yeah. And, and, and so we find that we need to realize the smallest, the way we think, and there is no small and great sin, but the smallest of sin in the way we think can impact your life forever. Did you ever think about that? Right up to the very end. And, and, and so we see, don't let your anger get away from you. Don't, don't, don't get so angry that you don't think about what you're doing. And again, people will push buttons. Verse 13, the Lord God's still speaking. This is the water of Mirabah. Now, Mirabah means contention. It means spite. It means disagreement. You want a glass of that this morning? You know how you know how the Lord God destroys churches? He gives them a big glass of Mirabah. And it happens. I've lived it. I know it. I've seen it. And this is exactly how he does it. So the Lord God called the place bitter or 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 uh, stroving because the children of Israel strove with the Lord. And notice it says he strove with the Lord, not with the preacher. He strove with the Lord. And he was sanctified in them. Now that's a very interesting statement. He, they strove with him or, or rebelled against him. And the Bible says the Almighty was sanctified in him. You wonder why people like Ma uh, Madam, Madam Marilyn O'Hare existed? Well, the best I understand from this, he was sanctified in it. When she was cast alive into hell for her rebellion against God, God got great glory. My kids told me one time I looked like Jeff Donner. <laughs> and and uh, why does such a creature exist? They don't even know how many people he did kill. God gets great glory in it. We don't understand it, but God gets great glory in it. And, and, and so we find the very uh, same thing happens here. He gets glory out of their rebellion. Verse 15, how our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have d dwelt in Egypt a long time. Now what's a long time? We're going to see in a minute. I'll go ahead and tell you, and then I'll show you where I, I, I get that from. A long time is 20 years. Now, sometimes we get impatient, and we don't hear from the Lord, and, and we feel like He's not in the saving business anymore. Sometimes it just takes a long time. According to the Scripture, the best that I can define it, again, a long time is 20 years. 20 years ago, I was 35. <laughs> 20 years ago, all my children were still at home. Adam, my oldest, was 13. 20 years ago. 20 years ago, we were meeting in the old rented building. We had, what was it? Not even 300 square feet. <laughs> 20 years ago. 20 years ago, 
some of the people in this room, see one, two, three, four, five, weren't even here 20 years ago. 20 years ago, this was black, like the rest of it. 20 years ago. 20 years is a long, long time. Are you willing to wait that long for the Lord? Well, you should. You should be willing to wait that long. Now, I praise his name. You know what? I couldn't even count the times he's met with me in the last 20 years. But if he hadn't met with me one time, and I've been saved 42 years, so if I understand a long time, I've only had a long time twice. <laughs> Right? When the Lord saved me 42 years ago, I was a 12 year old boy. That's a long time ago, wasn't it? So, should I have been satisfied with God meeting with me only once since then? Well, according to the scripture, yes, I should have been well satisfied. It takes a long time. And, and we are an immediate people. That's why we have microwaves. And that's why we get impatient waiting for the turkey because we don't like a long time, right? We just, it's just against our nature. And so he reminds them they were in Egypt a long time. He reminds them of the situation. And the Egyptians vexed us. They didn't feed us. They didn't make life easy on us. They vexed us. You know what this world is going to do to you? They're going to vex you. They're going to take you down. They're going to do everything they can to discourage you in every way. And listen, dear friend, they want you to be like them. You ever think about that? Why is all this junk pushed down our throat? Because they want you to be like them. Now these sodomites and cross-dressers and asexuals or whatever they're calling them today, but oh, they look so happy on TV, don't they? They're trying to sell you a bill of goods. They're not happy. They're miserable. They're choked out in life of sin. And they want you there too. Right? And, and so we find that the Lord God remembers them uh, or reminds them the misery of Egypt. And sometimes we need that. You were there a long time and now you're out. Verse 16. And, and when he cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel and had brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of thy border. We're about to go in. You want to go into victory this morning? I, I think Sadly, that's a legitimate question because I don't think all of God's people are. They want to hang on to the world with one hand and with God the other, and they don't want to let go of this one. You see what I'm saying? They'll tell you that, but, but are, they, are they really in that condition? Now go with me to very quickly to 1 Samuel chapter 7, and we're going to wind this up. 1 Samuel chapter 7. 1 Samuel chapter 7 in the first verse. And the men of Kareth Jerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord. Now, they really didn't have no business with that. But they picked it. Who was to carry the ark? The, the symbol of the presence of God in that day. Who was supposed to carry it? The Levites, right? And they weren't supposed to touch it. They were put to put the staves through and carry it like this. That way nobody touched the ark of God. And we find, so do you know the story why this had to happen this way? Remember, David was wanting to bring the ark of God down, and he had his little naked dance down through there. Where did he come up with that trash? You know, David got out of the Lord's will many, many is that anywhere in, in the instruction on how to move the ark? No! 
Where did he come up with that? But he did it. And what happened? They lost the ark, remember? It wasn't where it was supposed to be. It wasn't at Jerusalem. You know what? There's always a reason why God don't meet with you. Do you ever think about that? There's always a reason. And um, and uh, we find them <laughs> uh, losing, if you will, the Ark of the Covenant, the, the, the presence of the Almighty, the, the embodied person of God on the earth at that time. And and the men of Kerjatharim fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadad in the hill and sanctified Eleazar, uh, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kerjatharim that the time was long, for it was 20 years in all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Now again, if you underline in your Bible, underline that last phrase. It says they lamented for the Lord. They lamented to the Lord. You ever get sad? Lament is a type of grief. You know, uh, I think when Sarah died, it said that they lamented 30 days. That, uh, that's a long time. And not that I didn't love her, and maybe it's because in the modern day we don't know how to do things right. But when mother died, I was broken hearted. But I'm going to be honest, and if you be honest with me too, come on, you tell me the same thing. I didn't lament no 30 days. You see what I'm saying? And so, can you imagine being in that condition 20 years. Not the 30 days of Sarah. 30, I mean 20 years. Now, the reborn, the born again, should have a hint of that if God's not meeting with them. Did you ever think about that? I've told this before. I don't know if the Andersons were here, but... I was, uh, the Lord saved me when I was a 12-year-old boy. I had no teaching at all. No one to disciple me at all. Not that that's an excuse, but I grew my hair out down to here, and I lived the life of a rebel from the time I was about 16 till I was about 18. Now, I'm not saying that to brag. You know, if I understand the Word of God, I still have to harvest that crop. That's a scary thought to me. But, I say that to say this. In the middle of those times, maybe come home drunk, finally get caught up in the bed, and I felt that keen presence of God, like Elijah did when he was up on the mountain. God showed up, and the only voice he had heard was, What doest thou here, Elijah? He didn't pat Elijah on the back, did he? He didn't encourage Elijah. He said, what are you doing? You know, uh, I'm soon to be 55 now. Six years may not seem much when you compare it to 55. It's, it's, not, it's a little over 10%. <laughs> but you know what? When you're not hearing from God, that's a long time. That's a long time. How long has it been? 